بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. My beloved brothers and sisters, each one of us has a unique identity. Everything about you is different from others. There might be similarities, but it's not identical. Even identical twins are not really identical. If you take a look at the power of Allah, the magnificence of the creation, meaning how Allah has created such a magnificent creation, so unique, so beautiful, that Allah Almighty has kept every creature from the beginning to the end different, not only from other creatures, but from every other of the same species, subhanallah. So it's not that I am different from other animals or whatever else Allah has created, but every other human, totally unique. The same applies to any family of animals. Every single one of them is totally different. That is Allah. So if you look at myself and yourselves, we are human beings. Our eyes are generally in a similar position. Nose in a similar position. The same applies to every other organ. But notice how they recognize you with the iris. It is unique across the globe. Not just now. From Adam going all the way down to this time and shall be continuing right up to the end, unique. Not just that, but your fingerprint of each finger, totally unique. Subhanallah. And how many of us are there? In this room, we have a few thousand people. But not just the few billion who are on earth now, but the trillions and quadrillions who have come about from the beginning and shall be right up to the end. Every one of them, fingerprints, unique. What else is unique? Everything about you is unique, completely. The DNA, never repeated, it's not the same, no chance. And then if you look at the animals, and I'm sure you have so many animals, name me an animal here in this part of the country that people are impressed and intrigued with, common. Man? Sorry, what did you say? May Allah grant us goodness. The cat, every cat is different, completely and totally. Even the cats that are of the same breed are very different. The stripes, or the spots, or the fur, or whatever else it may be, completely different. The eyes. The same iris you're talking about, not just human beings, every single creature, totally different, completely. Do you know that alone is a sign that Allah is going to take account on one day? Because you and I can walk into a court today in order to receive justice. And the criminal is called and he's identified with an ID number. Sometimes they're duplicate IDs. Agreed? Sometimes they could be a little bit, someone can come in the place of another. A person looks similar, can actually get away with certain things, right? It's becoming more sophisticated now that technology is advancing. Allah's given us an opportunity to know a little bit more about the secrets and what, how He has created. Subhanallah. So, when you walk into a court, they call you up with your identification. The fact that every one of us has a unique identity already proves that a day will come when Allah is going to call you up. And there is no doubt. No doubt whatsoever. You're going to come up, you're going to answer. Who? Is, you cannot say it was not me. You've left so many prints here. Everything here proves it's you. There's no chance. Allah says... الْيَوْمَ نَخْتِمُ عَلَىٰ أَفْوَاهِهِمْ وَتُكَلِّمُنَا أَيْدِيهِمْ وَتَشْهَدُ أَرْجُلُهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ On this day, we shall seal their mouths. 
You don't need to talk. The other organs will bear witness against you. What happened? Your hands are doing all the bearing of witness. Your hands shall speak. Your legs shall speak. They shall bear witness against you. In one verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, The skin that you have, unique, it shall bear witness for you or against you. That's why Allah says, Those whom their skins bore witness against them shall say it. And Allah says, وَقَالُوا لِجُلُودِهِمْ لِمَا شَهِدْتُمْ عَلَيْنَا قَالُوا أَنْطَقَنَا اللَّهُ الَّذِي أَنْطَقَ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ They will tell their own skins, Why did you bear witness against us? And the skins will say, Well, Allah, who gave the speaking ability to everything, has given us that ability, Allah's instruction for us to bear witness. This proves your uniqueness. Okay, let's move further. The way your life started and how it is panning out is totally unique. Your experiences as a whole will never be exactly identical to anyone else. We may have similarities, but it's only similarities. The way you were born, the experience of your mother during childbirth, how you were at that particular point as you came out, what you ate, what you digested, what happened, what did not happen. Everything is part of your particular package and it is only and uniquely yours. This is the reason why we are taught not to be judgmental because Allah has kept aside a day of judgment and He is the only one who shall judge he is the only one who shall judge in the complete and correct way because he knows you inside out better than you know yourself. How many of you remember the day you were born? Not one. Well, if you do, put up your hand. <laughs> no one. Why? Because Allah did not want you to remember that. That's all. Had he wanted you to remember that, he would have... Really, made it easy for us. You have your earliest memories. Each one of us at a different time, a different thing. I have very early memories, but subhanallah, vague still. Maybe three years old, I recall a few things. Before that, I can't really remember. There may be evidence now of little videos and little photos and a few other things, but that's the most. Your journey is your own unique journey. When I see someone, I usually greet them with a smile and I try to be as polite as possible. And I always tell myself, I don't know what this person has been through, so go easy on them. I really don't know. If you speak to the psychologists and psychiatrists and the others who are specialized in that type of discipline, they will tell you that what happened to you when you were a child can actually play out in one way or another, when you are a little bit older, you don't know why did this come about? Why am I doing this? But it's because of something that happened when you were younger. Don't they say that? Yes. Who knew that? Only Allah. It was chosen for you. You went through certain things that make you incline at times towards things. In a way that you think, you know what, this is me, myself and I, not realizing, had it not been for those things that happened, or those things either I did, or someone did to me, or it was done. They've affected me. That's why I am who I am today. Some people are very quiet, because they were yelled at from the mo moment they were born. You started crying at someone, your father, or someone said, shut up! Imagine. That's like, you know, what happened here? Some people are loud because everyone around them was very loud when they were little. But you don't know. Why are you so loud? You say, no, it's natural, nature. Nature, complete nature. No, it's contaminated. <laughs> the Quran tells you, the hadith tells you, and I mentioned this hadith yesterday. Everyone is born on fitrah. Everyone is born on nature. And as soon as you're born, contamination begins. So your parents and those around you, they either this way or that way. So today we confuse it and we say, this is natural. But go back and check it out. It's not. It's not. 
It's circumstances that came about that made you incline one way or another. That's what happened. And yes, there may be an element of perhaps nature in certain things. But it definitely plays a massive role. The environment and what, ha what happened around you plays a very big role. Probably the biggest role. So Allah tells you as you grow older, we're going to increase your own capacity of thinking yourself. You must start asking questions and you must find out things, especially who is your Lord? Where did you come from? Where are you right now? And where are you going? And keep on finding out until you get a satisfactory response. We say that which is based on revelation. The one who made you has revealed. The day you find that revelation, it will hit a chord in a beautiful manner. Unlike anything prior to that. When the kuffar of Quraysh heard the Quran and they were Arabic speaking, very eloquent people, the most eloquent of the lot, what did they say? They said, this is not the speech of a man. This is actually the Lord of the world speaking to us. It has a sweetness. They still denied it out of arrogance. Why? Again, the environment, they tasted power. They tasted wealth. They tasted that feeling of grandness. You know, I'm, I'm big, I'm someone. And they did not want to lose it. They rejected. قَدْ نَعْلَمُ إِنَّهُ لَيَحْزُنُكَ الَّذِي يَقُولُونَ فَإِنَّهُمْ لَا يُكَذِّبُونَ We know that the evil words they are uttering against you and whatever they are saying is hurtful. It makes you sad. But we want to let you know they don't belie you. They are just denying it out of arrogance. They know you are truthful, but they say, no, we don't want. Because if we accept this message, we're going to have to adjust our lives completely and we are not prepared to do that. It's a comfort zone. The comfort zone... When Allah wants to bless you, He kicks you out of the comfort zone. I give you an example of someone. It's a true story. He worked for another person for many years and he was earning a salary and he was happily living, mashallah, him and his family. And he never dreamt he would lose his job. One day, something happened and he was blamed wrongly. And he was kicked out. Literally, in a terrible way. And he came to me and he said, you know, please speak to this brother. I'm, he's a Muslim, he's a good guy. And he has accused me wrongly and he's fired me. I told him, brother, I don't wish to talk to him. Leave him. You just bear patience and look for something. Do something. You know what? In two years, he became the supplier of his former boss. Two years. He became the supplier of the former boss. Obviously, he knew the field because he worked for the, this man. And then he came to me and told me, Wallahi, so true. It, two years were very long, very painful, very hard. It was less than two years when he started already doing something. And it grew, grew so big. And today, he, is, he has dwarfed his former boss. What happened? You were in your comfort zone. When Allah kicked you out, he said, I want to give you something better. Don't you ask Allah for rizq. Allah says, hang on, I want to give you more. It's in my hands. But the day you were out, you were so saddened for a little while. You were so upset, so depressed. I can tell you something else, also a true story. A man passed away leaving behind his wife and she promised, I'll never betray this man. I'll never marry again. It's not betrayal. It's not betrayal. A few years later, she married a guy whom she said, Wallah is better than my late husband. Subhanallah, what betrayal. And now the way you're talking. That's why if you hear me in my speeches, I always say, you are worried about what's going to happen to your wife after your death. Don't worry. She'll probably get a better guy than you. <laughs> and we've said that so many times. Subhanallah. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shines a torch on the path and shows you how to tread it, 
take it seriously. What is it? The light. The ultimate light is guidance. And Allah calls the Quran also the light, the guidance. Huda. Didn't Allah say, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ Huda. The book, the Quran, Allah says this book, no doubt in it, there is guidance. So when we talk of the light, we have to look into the word of Allah. There is no such word. It is unique. And before I get into a little bit of what this light actually is, let me remind you again. Don't become despondent and depressed because you've been through what you call negativity in your life. In fact, for a believer, it can only be positive. I'm going to learn from this. I'm going to grow from this. I'm going to improve. I, this will happen. This will happen. Inshallah, matter of time. Let me keep going. And as you keep going, you might not see something prior to your death. But your death will be such a gift because your calamity and disaster brought you closer to Allah. So it was a gift. And the goodness that Allah bestowed upon you brought you closer to Him. So that was a gift too. Both ways, they're gifts. So not only do we say go easy on others, go easy on yourself. Learn to love yourself. I always say, Wallahi, when you look in the mirror... Love yourself as Allah has made you. That is liberation. Liberation. True liberation is when you love yourself the way Allah made you. And I thank Allah. The way my hair is, I don't have much left anyway. <laughs> but I love myself the way without it. Still, so what? Bald. Like I said the other time, it's okay, it's a good thing. Man. Some people say, wow, look cool, man. No hair. Nice. Subhanallah. And if you have it, Alhamdulillah, you have it this way, that way, that's just one example. But your nose, your complexion, people die because of the complexion. That's it. Complexion. I mean, what's the big deal? It's a big deal. What's the big deal? Fair and lovely. Mashallah. <laughs> it's a fact. People die. Forget about it. It's okay. Fine. Whoever really cares, they will love me the way I am. Subhanallah. Those are the people I'm going to really, you know, perhaps appreciate. So learn to love yourself. Liberation. You will see. You cannot grow if you yourself are upset with what Allah has blessed you with. Your identity was not your choice. The fact that you were born a specific nationality. Although one might argue nationalities didn't exist at the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Well, they, they exist now, don't they? Who chose the fact that you would be born in this particular place? Allah. You didn't. The parents you had, the circumstances, everything. Allah has blessed you uniquely, uniquely. You have things. Every one of us have certain things others don't have. But identify them. You are gifted by Allah. Every one of you. And so am I, in my own way. Subhanallah. When Allah Almighty decided to create man, He created Adam. May peace be on him. And then he created Eve and then he caused the birth of so many through the two of them. And today we are here sitting in Shah Alam, mashallah. We come from that same source. Allah Almighty said, I will send you reminders, O man. In order to bring you back to me. And as much as you are created in a unique way. Where there is an element that always wants you to transgress. You know the other day we were talking about disciplining children. Interesting topic. Do you hide the toys? Or the chocolates and sweets that you don't want the kids to have? And you tell them, don't touch that cupboard. The minute you say, don't touch the cupboard, they become curious. When you come back, you'll find them climbing on top and checking what's going on. Agreed? Or are you going to leave it right in front of them and say, you know what? Let me explain to you. You have too many of these. 
look, show them a YouTube clip. I remember showing my kids, you know, that one of them was biting their nails so much, and I saw some clips of, you know, pussy nails and so on, and I started to look, this is what will happen, this is what will happen, see the video, they never bit their nails again. I don't want it to be like this. Although I exaggerated it a little bit as a parent, <laughs> right? But you want to show them, look, you're going to eat so much, look, this is how your teeth will be, this is how this will be, this is how it might become, and this is, or it would become, and they begin to stay away from it because they are educated and enlightened. Look, it may not be as serious as what you said, but it's going to harm you. So you find in some homes, there's a pile of sweets and chocolates of the best of whatever you could get. And the kids are little, but they don't even touch it. Why? That's the way they've been trained. And you find some, no matter what you try to tell them not to do, that's exactly what they want to do. <laughs> Shaitan came to Adam. Allah told him, do whatever you want. Don't go near this tree. Oh, let me see. That man, you see that man. He says, what's happening here? Shaitan comes and says, oh, that's a tree. That's a good tree, big tree, nice. You know, what will I get here? In fact, he didn't even ask, what will I get? Shaitan came and said, you know what, here, if you have from this tree, something amazing is going to happen. Shaitan prods us to commit sin, to transgress against Allah. Because he promised Allah, he said, you know what, I'm better than Adam. What did you create him for? I'm better than him. You didn't need to create him. I'm going to show you he's going to worship me, not even you. I will, everything you want to say, I'll prove to you. And this was Allah for his own divine wisdom that we may never understand, allowed Shaitan to say, okay, let's see. You guys go, put you on earth, let's see what happens. And you're going to come back to me and I'll judge between you and I'll give you whatever you deserve with the tipping towards mercy. What does that mean? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will definitely forgive for any excuse, for any reason, for anything that deserves that. Keep doing good. So here comes Adam, may peace be upon him, and he did the thing he was told not to do. Immediately he regretted it. He said, oh Allah, oh Allah, we have wronged ourselves. If you don't forgive us and have mercy on us, we will be the losers. I'm sure you know the verse. It's a dua that we should be making too. رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِن لَّمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ It's a supplication all of us should be saying. I already translated it before I read it. So Adam alayhi salam said it. Allah says, you know what? You are forgiven. Just by uttering one sentence, you are forgiven. So Allah says, I'm going to send you messages. Take them serious. Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah says, I'm going to send you the guidance, the light. Whoever follows that guidance, that I will send them. The light that I will send them. Allah says, لا خوف عليهم. They have no fear and they have no reason to fear. They will have no sadness and they will not have reason to be sadness even in the future. By doing what? Follow the guidance. To this day, the most content people on earth are those who follow revelation, hands down. The most content people on earth, content, are those who follow revelation. Those who've disciplined themselves as per the instruction of Allah. They are the happiest and the most content. Subhanallah. Why? They saw the light, they walked on it. That was your creator telling you. He sent you a message, he sent you another message. Now let me tell you, we are fortunate. I said it yesterday. We're fortunate because we're the ummah of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We are so fortunate. Many of us were born Muslim. They are from amongst us, those who came to Islam later on. We are fortunate because Allah blessed us to be the ummah and the nation of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Quran is the word of Allah. Right? The Quran is the word of Allah. Allah is the greatest. He created, like I said, right at the beginning of the speech, He created every single creature totally unique from all the other creatures and 
from all the others of the same species as well. That's the uniqueness of Allah. He has created mind-boggling manner. He's created. Allah is the great test. You know that statement. Have you ever thought of how many times it's repeated every single day? It is the most repeated statement ever. Allahu Akbar. Ever. How many times do we pray? Five times. How many units of prayer? 17 units in the farad alone through the day. How many times did you say Allahu Akbar? How many times did you say Allahu Akbar? I think we need to quickly do a count, isn't it? I don't even know. <laughs> so if you and I say it, for example, a hundred times, and how many Muslims are there? And how many of them are praying? MashaAllah. Imagine, what's the number? Everyone say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. What about the Adhan and Iqama? We haven't yet counted that. It is the most repeated statement ever in existence. Nobody can deny that. Actually, they can fly a kite if they want to argue with that. Wallahi. Flying a kite was one of my favorite <laughs> hobbies at one time. I used to keep a, a little card at one stage when I was a bit crazy. I used to keep a card how to fly a kite with a little link, YouTube link. And I even have it on my phone to this day, how to fly a kite. When guys used to swear me and, you know, say bad things, whatever, I say, brother, I have a gift for you, how to fly a kite. <laughs> yes, I, I did that at one stage. And up to recently, some of you might have seen some of my posts where someone says something so ugly and under there it says, how to fly a kite. <laughs> That's me commenting, how to fly a kite. You know why? Because, brother, you, you mean... Your contribution here doesn't really bother me. It doesn't, you, you, you want to character assassinate or whatever you would like to do, goodbye. Just learn to fly a kite first. <laughs> so Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest, is a declaration and a statement that is the most repeated in existence from the beginning of Adam right to the end of the last person. Allahu Akbar is the most repeated. You cannot argue. You just calculate it. In fact, I, I, I wish there could be from amongst us those who probably would spend a bit of time to see how many times it's repeated. On average, a day. And every single day. Subhanallah. May Allah grant us goodness. Even when, when, when making an animal halal, what do you say? Bismillah. Bismillah, Allahu Akbar. Subhanallah. When you go for Hajj and Umrah, what's the statement? Bismillah, Allahu Akbar. I tell you, it's amazing. I'm so happy to be a part of the Ummah. It's the most repeated statement. Allah is the greatest. His word has to be the greatest. When he chose for that word to be sent through an angel, that angel became the greatest, Jibreel alayhi salam. When he chose the Nabi who is going to who's going to be the messenger carrying that word to us, that Nabi became the greatest, his Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he chose the month in which that should be revealed, that month is the greatest. It became the greatest month is the month of Ramadan. When he chose the night for it to be revealed, that night became the greatest. It is the night of Laylatul Qadr. When he chose the cities in which it was going to be revealed, those cities became the greatest. They are the cities of Makkah and Medina, when he chose the Ummah, it was going to be revealed to the Ummah, became the greatest by virtue of its connection with the Quran. Therefore, my brothers, my sisters, your connection with the Quran will make you greater than you can imagine. How connected are you with the word of Allah? We're talking of the light. The light is shining right in front of you, but it's you who doesn't want to look at it. My brothers and sisters, isn't it time for us to go into this revelation and check it out. Muhammad, peace be upon him, does not need your validation or mine. His status is the highest. It's over. It's done. It's history. It cannot change. Jibreel alayhi salam, it will not change. He's the greatest of the mess of the angels. The month of Ramadan, Laylatul Qadr, until Qiyamah and the last day, it will remain the greatest night and the greatest month. No chance. It's only you and I who are dilly-dallying and we are 
Not even interested at times, but you have the greatest on an app in your phone. I want to take it further. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says, The greatest or the best from amongst you are those who learn and teach what? Can you tell me? The Quran. Are we so deaf? Are we so difficult? Are we so hardened that we do not walk the path? We do not connect with something that has already proven to be the main source of the success, the ultimate success and elevation in status of everything that it came in touch with. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. May Allah Almighty help me to improve my connection with the Quran. The connection with the Quran is not just a recital. But the reciting is part of it. You try to perfect, you try to read, you try to see. Someone asked me a question here yesterday that if you uh, cannot read the Arabic properly and you might make a few blunders in the way you are reciting within yourself when you are doing salah, will Allah not punish you? I said, no, he won't. Are you trying your best? You're trying the best to recite and you're trying to pronounce in a good way? No problem. Don't overdo things. Because I've seen some people, Alhamdulillah. Rahman, Rahman. Relax. Calm down. Be calm. It's supposed to be calming. And have you not seen it? I'm sure you've seen it happening. You know? I've had so many experiences in my years. You're standing next to someone in Salat and you can hear them struggling. And they even look at my brother, you don't need to do all of this. Try your best and love it. Enjoy it. Salah is there to enjoy. Recitation of the Quran is there to enjoy. Enjoy it. It's melodious. It's beautiful. And you know what? Work slowly but surely and let it come on your tongue slowly but surely. But be interested in it. I'm amazed and impressed by people who speak in an American accent, for example. And they have nothing to do with the States. They've never been there. I asked one of the sisters. <laughs> yes, I asked one of the sisters, where did you get your accent from? She said, I watch TV, man. <laughs> Subhanallah. That's what, it, that's what it is. So you can develop the accents of every place and everything. But come on, Quran, put a small effort. Listen carefully to one reciter repeatedly. And Allah will give you, inshallah, he'll open the doors. But if you are struggling, you, that struggle is rewarding. Every letter the Quran says, every letter, oh, sorry, the, uh, uh, Allah Almighty tells us through the blessed lips of Nabi Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, every letter you read has 10 rewards. Every letter you read has 10 rewards. Amazing. Every letter you read has 10 rewards. Go for it, man. Today, let's be honest, how many of us have read Quran today? Put up your hands. We can do better. I mean, mashallah, there were quite a few hands. We can do better. But I want to ask you another question. How many of you have read Quran in Salah? Put up your hands. Much better. Okay, that means you read Quran. That means you read Quran today. In fact, it brings me to another point. Salah is the founding pillar of Islam. It is not valid unless you've read Quran in it. How's, how's that? How's that? Salah is not valid unless you've read Quran in it. Why? It's Allah telling you this is the main core message. This is it. Here it is. You will not be able to get connection with me unless you are connected to this particular revelation. So connect with Allah. Wallahi, I tell you, the evidence is overwhelming. It's overwhelming. So, Allah Almighty wants us to connect with the Quran. Like I said, the duty we have is not just the recital. The recital, inshallah, will improve it. You get a reward 10 for every letter. 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 Alif Lam Mim 30. 3 0. Subhanallah. Thalika al kitab la rayba fihi hudan lil muttaqin. I don't even know. I don't even know. It's just clocking and clocking and clocking and clocking. And we're. When you sit and think of the rewards that Allah has kept for us, He gives it, He is the most generous ever. Allah calls Himself the generous. And you know what? There is nobody more generous than Allah. 
When I just read what I read now, anyone who taught me in any way, shape or form how to read gets a full reward and whoever taught them and whoever taught the one who taught them and whoever taught the one who taught the one who taught them and whoever taught the one who taught the one who taught the one who taught them and you will be irritated by how many times I say taught them and taught them but that irritation is not for Allah. Allah, the reward clocks right up to the end when it gets to Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And not just once, but every single time. And whenever you do good, anyone who taught you or who guided you or who told you will get a full reward of everything you did and everything someone did because they saw you do it. And everything someone did because they saw the one who saw you do it. And so on. You see? And if you were to see if there, if, if, if there was a way of looking at how reward plugs in Wallahi, if it was in the shape of little wires or lights going up to the heavens, you would just see lightning everywhere in the world. It would be reward upon reward upon reward upon reward. Not just for recitation of the Quran, but every single good deed. So many rewards. Wow. Subhanallah. Mind boggling. But here you are, you and I, we're sitting and we're still waiting. Check at those lights. Look at how much reward people are clocking. Wow. Talk about yourself, please. You're watching the show. A few minutes ago, Brother Wail Ibrahim gave us an example. He said, when we were little, we used to watch uh, Kung Fu. What's it called? Jackie Chan. What's the guy's name? He says, when we watch that and we finish the movie, we come out and we feel like we can punch up everyone. <laughs> yeah. What was that? You're sitting and watching my man. You hit a brick, I swear your hand will break. Subhanallah. Why? You, know, you don't know a thing. You were just watching. The same is happening with us and the Quran. We're watching everyone progress and we're sitting behind, lagging. What am I? Hey, mashallah, good reciter. What about you? Come on. Hey, did you see the melody with which he read? You can also read with the melody. But we sit. It's good. It's okay. You're going. But are you going to progress? Shouldn't a day come when you try to add a melody for the sake of Allah? Why did I do that? Only for the sake of Allah. That's Allah. And Allah will reward you. Then you need to go into the meaning of what Allah Almighty has revealed. The meaning. The Arabic of it, the word of Allah. The translation or the meaning is the attempt of a human being to try and explain to you what he or she believes is the closest translation to this. That's why in a translation, a lot of the times the scholars from before, they say, put the Arabic on one side and your attempt on the other side. You follow what we're saying? Many times you find a translation of the Quran, one side is the Arabic and the other side is the translation. The translation is not the word of Allah. It is an attempt to explain the word of Allah. That's why there will be a few differences in the usage of words, depending on the person's education, their understanding, what part of the world they come from, what, and so on. So here is the word, of, uh, the word of Allah. And this part here, so many other people will have attempted in so many different languages. There could be mistakes in the translation, but not in the word of Allah. And that's why when I spoke to a Christian brother some time back and told him, you know, the last time I checked, there were 42 different versions of the Bible. He said, I found hundreds of versions of the Quran. I told him, where? So he started naming translations. I told him, that's the translation, my brother. But the word of Allah is one throughout the world, from before to, the, to now, it's one. And let's not even argue about that. So the point I'm raising is, you need to go into the translation. You need to find out what is Allah telling me. It's not only about recital. We sit and we hear beautiful, melodious recitations. I did a little study about dhikr. You know, dhikr, the adhkar that we say with young boys in one masjid. And I asked the young boys, you guys are doing dhikr, right? You guys are the remembrance of Allah. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar, wa la hawla, wa la quwata illa billah, and so on. So do you know the meaning of it? You know what? About 70% of them did not know what exactly they were saying. And then I asked, okay, do you know what you're saying in Salat? Almost 90% did not know what they were saying in Salat. No wonder we are lazy. No wonder. But when you know what you're saying, make an effort. 
You will never know until you try and you make an effort and you attend maybe lessons or a workshop or something or you read or you educate yourself. What am I saying? Make an effort and Allah will open the doors for you. So we learn the Quran, we learn its meaning, we put it into practice and then we teach it to others. And that's, those are the rights of the Quran over you and I. To learn it, to understand its meaning, to put it into practice and to teach it to others. When you've done that, Allah says, you are the best. خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنَ وَعَلَّمَهُ And then you might have heard another narration where the Prophet peace be upon him says, the best of you are those who are best in character. So one might think, is there a contradiction? One says the best are those who learn and teach the Quran and the other says the best are those who are best in character. I tell you, there's no contradiction. The reason is, if you do this, you will automatically arrive at that. When Aisha radiallahu anha was asked about the character of the Prophet, peace be upon him, you know what she said? Kana khuluquhu, kana khuluquhu al-Quran. His character, you want to know about his character? His character was the Quran. He was a moving Quran. Whatever the Quran said, that was him. Embodiment. Subhanallah. Kana khuluquhu al-Quran. So that means... Those who carry the Qur'an, if they are fulfilling the rights of the Qur'an, they will immediately have the best character and conduct. I always say, when you think you're pious, but you're still vulgar and you still shout and scream and abuse and hurt people, shaitan's got you gripped. I am pious. He makes you feel you are nowhere near pious. Nowhere near pious. Because piety comes with brilliance of character and conduct. The two are together. There is no chance that the two are divorced. Together. A pious person can never be a person whose character stinks. No chance. You can have a guy who's in salah five times a day, six times a day. You can have a person, when I say six, you know what I'm talking of, the voluntary ones, right? You can have a person who reads Quran whole day and does dhikr whole day. And mashallah, they are so mashallah good with their physical actions. But... If their character is bad, they are not pious. No chance. Because it comes hand in hand. Work on your character. The one narration says, those who have great character will be resurrected with the ones who are loved by Allah. Subhanallah. And the prophets and so on. And the shuhada and the salihin. How? Because greatness of character is what makes you as a human being. The best. You outshine everyone else. Are we going to work on it? You should. You must. The month of Ramadan, we said the best month. Revelation of the Quran. We're talking of low mahfuz to the lowest sky. Happened on the night of decree in Ramadan. Because someone might argue, okay, it took 23 years. Why did you say it was revealed in Ramadan? Well, number one, Allah Almighty. There's two types of revelation. The one is... Speaking about the entire Quran that came from that, the first heaven, the first sky, right to humankind. That was spaced out. Every time something happened, verses were revealed. But from the preserved tablet known as Lohim Mahfud to the lowest heaven, that's what happened on the night of decree and power. And this is why we say Shahru Ramadan. Wow, it brings me to a point. What is the month of Ramadan all about? Fasting, isn't it? If I say, Ramadan, Ramadan is the month of what? Fasting. Only one place in the Quran, Allah says, Shahru Ramadan, in Surah Al-Baqarah. Does he talk about fasting immediately? No. Yes, there, there's fasting mentioned in those verses, but that particular verse, Shahru Ramadan, alladhi unzila fihi al-Quran, hudan linnas. He speaks about the Quran. He says the month of Ramadan is the month in which the Quran was revealed. Surely he would have said the month of Ramadan is the month in which you shall fast. He didn't even say that. We know that we believe it, we follow it. Because the previous verse Allah says, O you who believe fasting has been made compulsory upon you like it was upon those before you. That was the previous verse. But when he used the term Shahru Ramadan, 
with it, he decided to use its connection with the Quran rather than the issue of fasting. Amazing. So that Allah Almighty is the one who decides. If we are going to make an effort and we are going to learn this Quran and immediately, like I say, it will reflect upon your character. When you are pious, when you are learning, when you want to teach, calm down. It should show in your character. You are an amazing person. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was amazing. I was saying the month of Ramadan is the month in which the Quran was revealed. It is known as the month of generosity as well. Where did we get that from? The Sahaba radiallahu anhum say about the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, kana ajwad nas. He was the most generous of all the people. He was already throughout the year, the most generous of all the people. He used to give everyone everything and whatever. And he was generous, not just with giving, but with everything and in every other way. The hadith says he was even more generous in the month of Ramadan when Jibreel alayhi salam used to come and they used to read the Quran together. What does that mean? Recitation of the Quran should make you generous and it should develop your character and your conduct. If it's not doing that, there's something wrong. You cannot have a person who carries the Quran and they are not grand in their character and conduct. Outstanding. Do you know? We don't know the unseen, but a lot of the times I can tell. You meet youngsters and I can say, are you half in it? They say, yes. How do you know? It shows on your face. Have you ever seen that? Some of you have. We could be wrong sometimes. Like I'm saying, we don't know the unseen. But there's a certain glow that they have. And sometimes you recognize it. You say, wow, this person, are you Hafid? Are you memorized? No, I, I started, I'm doing, I did 15 Jews. Yeah. Well, how do you know? Shows on your face. Like when you have someone who's a chain smoker. They don't know it shows on their face as well. Chain smoker. I asked the one brother, you smoke? He said, yes. I said, I thought so. <laughs> How do you know? My brother, you're a stinking man. <laughs> it's smelling. I can see your mouth, the way you're talking. You know, the lips have gone so dark and so different. And so, and I knew, knew you before. Because sometimes, naturally, people's lips might be a bit dark. But you know someone before and everything's changed. You're wondering, what do you do? Smoke. The question was, what do you smoke? That's the question. <laughs> Allah grant us ease. Allah grant us ease. So the same applies. Allah says, regarding those who pray often, Allah says, there is a sign. The signs upon their faces, recognition, subhanallah, because of the sujood, the prostration. You prostrate a lot, it shines on your face. It shines on your face. You know, man hasunat salatuhu fil layl. What an amazing saying. Whoever's prayer in the darkest hours of the night is beautiful, Allah beautifies their face during the daytime. You go down and you pray, prostrate for Allah at night, everyone sleeping, and spend time doing that. Guess what? Allah will grant you a glow, it will be recognized. By some, but at least Allah knows. May Allah bless all of us. So, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was very generous. His character came so beautifully, so amazing. The character and conduct of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Then the narrations go on to say, like I said, the best from amongst you, those who learn and teach the Quran, the best from amongst you are those whose character is the best. You see how there is no contradiction between the two. And there's another narration, the best from amongst you are those who are best to their wives and family members. You know, people like to fight with me sometimes. Why do you always side with the women? And I tell them I don't. The men just don't listen to me. So they don't know. That we've actually sided with them. 
Because I'm a man. MashaAllah. But in reality, it's not to do with siding. It's to do with the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ and the Qur'an. Whether you like it or you don't like it. Because if the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, could tell his companions loudly, the best from amongst you are those who are best to their wives. Why should we be ashamed of repeating the same? That, that statement is valid to this day and shall be valid right up to the end. Why? So the best from amongst you, the best from amongst you, the best from amongst you in all these hadith, there is no contradiction because if you are connected to the Quran, your character shines. If you are outstanding in your character, how will you treat your wife? Thank you. You find what we're saying? You're outstanding in your character. So it's all interconnected. How can you be a person who is close to Allah and you're reading the Quran and you're praying five times a day and then you come home and you sway and you shout and you scream behind closed doors? A lot of people say, you don't know this guy. What he shows you is just something he's showing you. But ask me, I know he lives with me. It should be the other way around. You know this guy? He's better than what you think he is. I know I live with him. Subhanallah. That's how it should be. But this is Allah. And Allah Almighty tells us, all these things are connected. Connected. Everything is connected. You know, if you were to pick the Quran, you would notice something amazing in that book. It has protection. Yesterday I mentioned something about someone who said that you cannot do magic on a true believer. You remember I said that yesterday? Yes. Right. Somebody asked me for the link. It's there. I think the brother, uh, Brother Razali was going to post it up here for everyone to actually see. It's there. There is a link. Imagine you have the Quran. In it there is protection. Allah tells you, read this and the small portions, morning and evening, you will be protected, guaranteed. No chance of anyone harming you. Guaranteed protection. Now imagine if you read the whole Quran. Allah says, in this Quran there is shifa. قَدْ جَاءَتْكُمْ مَوْعِظَةٌ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ وَشِفَاءٌ لِمَا فِي الصُّدُورِ وَهُدَى Allah is describing the Quran with so many things. He says, look, there is a reminder from your Lord. There is shifa. The diseases of the heart are dealt with. The Quran dealt, deals with diseases. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, there is guidance in it. And so on. The shifa bit, the cure bit. There is cure in verses of the Quran. You read them, you understand them, for example, or you repeat some verses. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, tells us to repeat. For example, the mu'awwidat, the last three surahs of the Quran. Or the last two are known as Mu'awidat and Suratul Ikhlas. And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, teaches us about Ayatul Kursi. And he teaches us about so many other surahs and so many other things. And he, he wants us to read this and to read that. Subhanallah. But there is cure in verses perhaps that we may not know that there is cure in. Hence, it is our duty to start from the beginning and to end at the end and then to start again. And you read the entire Quran. One sister asked me once that, can I just read the selected verses or surahs I'm supposed to read every night? Like every Friday, I'll just read Kaf. Every other day, I'll just read this surah. Uh, every morning and evening, I'll only read these surahs. Is it okay if I only do that? And I said, you know, my sister, it's good to do this. Definitely the adhkar of the morning and the evening, they are powerful. But what I need you to know is your connection with the Quran should be holistic. Make an effort to start and to leave a marker, even if it's half a page a day. Up to when you get to the end. Even if it takes you a month or a year. But at least finish it and complete it. That's why as Muslims, the month of Ramadan is the month of the Quran. Most of us would read the entire Quran in Ramadan. Am I right or wrong? From the beginning to the end, they call it a khatma. Read it and we would like to hear it in Taraweeh as well. Those of us who take the listening of the Quran in Taraweeh. Seriously, we are... We are hurt when we miss a little bit here and there. Hey, I wanted to listen to the entire Quran from the beginning to the end. And that's why I keep going to the same masjid and I'm listening carefully and I don't want to run around to different places and so on because I don't want to miss any portion. That's what happens. Connection with the Quran. The Quran has protection. Allah says, we have revealed these verses or this Quran, this book, and we will protect it. 
إنا نحن نزلنا الذكر وإنا له لحافظون. We have revealed it and we will protect it. Allah says. Now I tell you, if you have made an effort to put a portion of it in your heart, will Allah not protect you? Allah is going to protect the Quran, right? Where is it? In my heart. So Allah has to protect your heart. Subhanallah. That's why Allah says, "Fihi shifa ulima fi sudur." It has in it cure for the diseases of the heart. You want to put it in your heart? We'll cure your heart. Allahu Akbar. They say, are you sick? Are you ill? You have a disease. You have a sickness. Terminal or non-terminal. May Allah grant cure to all of us. Amen. Start putting the Quran in memory. Put it in your heart. What will happen? Allah will cure that heart. Allah will protect the heart. Allah, has to, Allah promises we will protect this dhikr. So now where is it? It's in my heart. So these people are protected. You see someone walking and they've got three, four, five bodyguards, you know, subhanallah. And you're wondering, what's going on here? Wallahi, imagine a person who's a hafid, how many angels there must be around them to guard them. Because Allah says, we will guard. If you read Ayatul Kursi and the angels are protecting you, imagine you have the whole Quran. What's going to happen? So my brothers and sisters, we make an effort by the will of Allah. Like I started off by saying, learn to love yourself. This identity, Allah has created you in a specific way. Allah has given you. Allah has blessed you with everything. The most unique thing that He's blessed you with is your identity. He chose it for you. Allah says, الَّذِي خَلَقَكَ فَسَوَّاكَ فَعَدَلَكَ فِي أَيِّ صُورَةٍ مَا شَاءَ رَكَّبَكَ Allah says, O oh man, what has deceived you against your own Lord who made you, He fashioned you, He gave you your shape, your identity, everything He gave you. When you look into the mirror and you see this person, Allah gave you that identity. Allah says, we gave it to you. Learn to love yourself. You'll be liberated. You cannot be close to Allah when you hate your own self. You can't. Because Allah made you and you don't even like yourself. How are you going to like Allah? So part of your connection, I'm happy. It's okay. I have a few. We all have a few flaws. Why do we have flaws? Have you, has anyone ever told you why we all have a few flaws? Look at your eye. One is always smaller than the other. Sorry, I know I opened a can of worms. Look at your nose. It's always slightly here, slightly there, this way, that way. Always. I don't look. This is my, this is my, what do they call it? This is, what side? This is my best side. Yeah, exactly. My best side. Especially, and then they do this. You know? I swear. Yeah. I swear it's happening all the time. You see, it's my best side. This side, no, my teeth don't look nice. My profile, this side is not that grand. Notice how my Malay accent is coming out. <laughs> but subhanallah, it's okay. Everyone is normal. I mean, you notice things no one's ever, ever noticed because you're looking too much in the mirror. That's the reason. You're looking too long. You're just supposed to look, do your thing and move. You weren't created to look in front of the mirror. You know, the amount of selfies we take these days is so bad that I told someone the other day when I was in Indonesia, I said, if we had to do dhikr each time we took a selfie, we'd be saints. <laughs> we'd be saints. So many selfies. Every little one. <laughs> and the worst part is, <laughs> may Allah grant us ease. Meaning you can, you can, but it, it shouldn't be so much that you're obsessed with it, subhanAllah. Even, you know, filters, people ask, is it halal haram to use filters? Can we use filters? It depends what the filter's doing. It's making you into a dog. How can I say it's halal? <laughs> it's making you into a little animal. Well, how can I say it's halal? And so you know. And sometimes it changes your identity completely. I can't tell you that that's halal. I mean, come on. Yeah, maybe a little bit, it makes me, it, it enhances the light a little bit. That's fine. It enhances perhaps what the picture looks like slightly because of the clarity. That's okay. But to change yourself completely cannot be permissible in the eyes of Allah. I love yourself. I love my, and whoever loves you exactly the way you are, those are genuine true people. That's what it is. I'm a person. Nose is bent completely, totally. Lip, one side, this side. Your mouth, this side. The teeth will be this way, that will be that way. It's okay. Why has Allah done this? Do you ever know? Do you know that? He has done it in order for us to understand the value of paradise, where things shall be perfect. Perfection is for Allah alone. That's what it is. Perfection is for Allah alone. And I've always said, 
Paradise would lose its value if there was perfection here on earth. There would be no point to go. I don't need to go to paradise because what? Imagine now when you look at that filter and you look like some amazing creature. You tell us, inshallah, when I go to Jannah, I look like this. <laughs> Maybe, who knows? In Jannah, you can look how you want. There will be automatic filters. You just think about it. No phones. You think about it. Next thing you're looking. Wow. Oh, look at me. Green eyes. Oh, blue eyes. Oh, wow. Look at this. And it's just there. So Allah's created paradise. He's promised us that perfection. This is just a test. It's the ground where the test is written. It's like the college. It's like a huge examination room where you enter and you're writing the exam. That's all. So we are here in an examination room. How long are we going to be here for? Well, once you're done with your examination, you can walk out. Walk out into what? The hereafter. Some people finish in a few years. Some people, the exam goes on and on and on for a hundred years until all the others are saying, you're not yet finished, come on. Allahu <laughs> Akbar. <laughs> I hope you got what I said. People say, may you live for a hundred years. I say, please relax. I don't really want to live for a hundred years. You know? but when may Allah take us whenever He knows it's right for us to go and when He is pleased with us. Whatever we leave behind, inshallah, Allah will take care of it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So, the point I'm raising, my beloved brothers and sisters, development of a connection with Allah is important. There are a lot of lights. And subhanallah, the minute you've made your tawbah, earlier today there was a discussion of tawbah by one of my colleagues, in fact, Dr. Muhammad. And subhanallah, we follow it up by saying we need to consolidate that relationship with the Qur'an. We need to make sure we're walking on this path. We need to make sure we have great company. The same Quran has enough in it for us. It leads you to the sunnah of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, And it will lead you to, to a life filled with great successes one after the other. If I want to walk on this path of goodness, it is made easy when many others are walking on the same path. And I've recognized them and I associate with them. That's why the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, gives so much importance to the family of believers. You are one family, you are one body, you stick out for one another, you, meaning you, you stand up for one another, you make sure that you support each other. Today, unfortunately, we have a lot to work on because people are jealous, they get, they're filled with hatred, they're filled with this and that, negativities. Let's work with one another. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu attaqullaha wa kunu ma'a sadiqeen O you who believe, be conscious of Allah, develop the correct relationship with Allah and be in the company of those who are truthful, good companionship. The best gift you can give yourself after what we've just mentioned is good company. I have a good set of friends, only four or five. My circle is very small, but they are lovely people. I can count on them. They have sober habits. They have great character. They fulfill their prayers. They give importance to the Quran. They are charitable. And I enjoy that company. When I'm in that company, I feel, subhanallah, my worship is made so easy. Because you're in company of lovely people. Time for salat, they say, let's pray. But I don't have wudu. But you see, two of them are already making a plan for the wudu. Two of them are already making a plan for the wudu and you the third one. And then you go in and you make the same plan and everything works easy. Why? Because I got good friends. Good friends. Are we going to make an effort? Subhanallah. Not just to be in good company, but to be good company for others. It's easy for me to say, be in good company. But then you say, but now, where is good company? You say, all right, you got to be good company for others. There might be people around you who are your friends, who may not be as practicing or as serious. For as long as you are influencing in the, in them in the right direction, they are in good company. But if they are influencing you in the wrong direction, then you are in bad company. As simple as that. So these are some of the messages that Allah Almighty has sent to us. Like I say, the Qur'an. The Qur'an, if I were to talk about it recently, I attended a graduation of Tahfiz in South Africa. And I spoke about this for a long time. It was quite a long speech. The Qur'an, the connection with the Qur'an, the value of the one who memorizes it. Not just you. Anyone who helped you, even by a word, of encouragement will get a reward 
of yours, your memorization. The parents of a Hafiz have a special rank. The reason is the encouragement. But if you were a parent who discouraged, you don't have that rank. The rank is not just, I'm a parent, so therefore I have an automatic rank. No, some parents, they actually don't even deserve that because they were discouraging people. I, I actually know of a lot of cases where people want to get closer to Allah and the parents stop them. They say, no, you can't do this. You can't dress this way. Why? You know, you look like a nun, they say. Subhanallah. How can you say that to your own child? Come on. If you were not, for example, practicing, don't stop your children from practicing. Yes, you might want to keep an eye on them so that they, you know, they can grow in a holistic way. It doesn't mean because I'm practicing now, I must become harsh. Wallahi, when I watch people online and even in real life, you interact with some and you see people with knowledge, a lot of knowledge, lacking in character. You tell yourself they have no practice. They are not practicing correctly. They are not practicing correctly. They don't have, they have not refined themselves. They still have a long way to go. And all of us do. But sometimes it's much more apparent. You can tell this guy, look at him. No shame. They come and talk of this one and that one. Leave them. You know what? That's not piety. That's not good character. If I have a problem with you, I don't just go online and start declaring my issues with you. I talk to you first. I care about you. And I talk to you and I bring the topic up and I address it. I might have been wrong. You might have been right. Or I might have had a misunderstanding or I might have seen something that wasn't. I remember a little social experiment they did once where a Muslim guy was picking up some beer bottles after a festival that occurred at a certain venue. Empty bottles. And he was throwing them in the bin. And someone saw him with this empty bottle in his hand, immediately taking photos and posting online. See, this guy drinks. Does he drink? He was just busy cleaning up the mess that was made by your children. May Allah protect us. So don't judge people. Allah has kept the day of judgment. My brothers and sisters, no matter what you've done, Allah is merciful. He will forgive you. Turn to Him and have hope in His mercy. Don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah. No matter where you have been, there is always reconciliation with Allah. Strengthen yourself. Have hope. As much as everything looks gloomy in this day and age, there's a lot of anxiety. People don't know which way finances are going, which way jobs are going, which way people are going. There's a lot of new things coming about that we've never heard of before. As much as all of that is happening, Wallahi, I swear by Allah, there is a lot of hope. The number of people who are turning towards Allah is magnificent. It's amazing. The number of people who are taking their shahada is in their thousands on a daily basis. And each time anyone has tried to blaspheme the Quran or to talk ill about the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, or to speak ill about Allah, Every time that has happened, Wallahi, I swear, it has only introduced Islam to those who had not yet been introduced to it. They say it's not about what they're talking about, it's about who they're talking about. Positive or negative, you are a point of interest. The minute you're a point of interest, they will notice everything about you because you're a point of interest. So they want to... They want to burn the Qur'an simply because they, they know its value, that's all. They know that, wow, this thing has been taught and learned by billions. Because they know that they want to burn it. Would they burn another book that no one really knew? They wouldn't. They talk about the messenger because of his value. Positive or negative is besides the point. Like I said, his reputation is intact. So they'll talk about you and I. When they know that you have something they don't have, don't worry. Allah grants victory. And that victory, inshallah, will be for all of us. May Allah grant us true victory and may Allah help us to become better people and to walk on the path. I pray that after this particular speech, all of us can improve our connection with the Quran and the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And inshallah, we can become the best versions of ourselves.
اقول قولي هذا وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد والسلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته